So I'm seeing a lot of silly things on Etsy here. Um, is made in Pakistan bad? Well, the, apparently there are some people complaining that they are ordering things that they think are coming from Great Britain and they're coming in from Pakistan and they're giving it a low star rating because of that. Now, here's the thing. If, if you order something from somebody and you don't get the product or something like that, okay. Right, but if you get the product as advertised, but it's coming from Pakistan instead of Great Britain, um, and if that bothers you, I don't know why it should. Just because something gets shipped to you from Great Britain doesn't mean that it was originally made there, right? We have a pretty good uh, example of this right here. This is called Knives House. Now, I bought this app from them and I did notice that it came in from Pakistan and it does say that these knives come from London somewhere but if they don't have uh, the knife on them that you want they can fulfill your order from one of their it says Asian counterparts one of their Asian warehouses or whatever it is which makes it sound like yeah we're international like we have we have a shop here in London whatever and we you know we have a shop over in asia and the blade that you wanted we just happen to have it stored at that shop um so one decent thing about this that i will say that kind of played out in my favor first of all what this is right here this ad this is somebody scalping somebody else's item that's what i'm gonna say right now uh, it looks like Knives House gets this axe from a blacksmith named Shiobi. I think that's what his name is. I'm not very good at pronouncing it. I've been talking to this guy because, well, I wanted this axe made different, right? And the only person that's going to be able to accommodate that is the guy actually making the damn axe. And he's already sent me pictures of the design and he's changed the back of it how I wanted it. Uh, so it doesn't have this round knob thing that's kind of pointless to me. Uh, I wanted a square back on it so you could put nails down and drive stakes down with it. And just so it fits better in my hand, right? And so I know I'm talking to the actual blacksmith that's making these things, right? And the funny thing is he's actually selling this axe for a better price. But when you search for it, the scalper's item comes up first. Now... I will say this, I paid an extra $10 for this axe. Uh, what is cool though, I, I will give them this. And you can't just steal somebody's item and sell it. You do have to like change something up about it. Uh, it seems like what Knives House has done is made their own sheath for this axe. So they're probably buying this axe without a sheath from this other blacksmith, Shiobi, well, however you say his name, respectfully, right? Uh, and then they're making their own sheath for this axe, and then they're selling it. And, you know, included in that sale is their sheath that they're now getting to sell along with this axe, plus whatever other little markup they can squeeze in there, right? Uh, but... I think where people get caught up is Knives House is going to say that they're based from London and something and that you're getting your product from England or <laughs> Great Britain, whatever, uh, instead of pa Pakistan. Now, I've already done a review on this axe and I have compared this axe to a uh, damn near a $200 axe and a $160 axe made here in the US, right? And we did we did come to the conclusion that this axe came out on top. It's a better quality axe than a White Hills Knives axe is, and that one's $160 with no sheath, with a sheath that you are going to throw away because it's not even, I mean, they might as well have wrapped it, wrapped the blade in a freaking napkin and been like, there's your sheath. Uh, the thing doesn't work. It's not functional. It has a belt loop that doesn't even belt loop. It 
it just, it doesn't work. You put the sheath on and the blade comes out of the bottom and literally cuts your hand. That has literally happened to me with a White Hills Knives axe. And when I got in touch with them to let them know about it, they tried telling me that that's all okay because this is a custom handmade thing. Oh yeah, and the blade was crooked on it. It was actually had a crooked blade. And they said that's okay too because it's custom. So, so uh, <clears throat> never buying anything from them again. And But that's made here in the US, right? Um, so what I will say is this, I'm talking to the blacksmith and I asked him straight up, where is your shop? And he had no problem telling me, yo, my shop is in Pakistan. This is where I'm making this from. So the guy I'm talking to, he's not trying to hide anything. He's not trying to make it sound like your ax is coming from Great Britain and make it look like that's where it's made. The ax is made in Pakistan and guess what? Uh, the guy that makes these has amazing work quality. That's all I can say because I actually have his axe, right? Uh, and here is my review. Great hatchet for a low price, $50 less than White Hills Knives with double the quality, would recommend. Um, the thing is, this isn't this shop's axe. And I kind of feel bad for that, for that now, now that I found the actual source of where this axe is coming from. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely ordering my other one from the, from the actual source and I will go through and give him an awesome review and I will put in that he actually even made a custom ax for me and he was upfront about everything, great communication. So, uh, that's what I got in the works now, but his sheath is actually different than this one. So in a way it's like, it's giving you the same item with a different quality on it. So I guess, I mean, looking between the both of them, you could look at this one and say, well, if I want this sheath, I'll pay an extra $10 as opposed to the other one. This is a very nice sheath, by the way. Uh, Knives House at least makes good sheaths. Maybe they're like a leather working place, I, who knows. Uh, so there's that, right? Uh, there was an other item I just saw that was like some kind of samurai sword looking thing and That was like the number one big complaint on it was yo. This says that it's coming from London, whatever and Come to find out it was shipped from Pakistan and I found out through DHL and he was all pissed off and I'm like But what about the actual item that you got? Did you get a good quality sword like who? <laughs> Who cares, right? Like, uh, I don't know. That's just the way that I'm looking at it. But I guess to answer the question, like, is made in Pakistan bad? No, absolutely not. There is a lot of good metal works and blacksmithing that comes from there. And if you really think about it, there's not going to be as many blacksmiths here in the U.S. that actually really blacksmith for a living and still have to fix old world things and actually have to make these things like there's just not as many right there's active blacksmiths in pakistan that are still repairing equipment working on just whatever it is that they do right and i don't know uh the rates the labor there seems to be much cheaper and they have good work quality so uh I have that featured in my other vids where I'm talking about the White Hills Knives Axe. I have, I literally have a video that says something about a Pakistan axe and it's awesome. And this is the axe that, you know, I was reviewing. So I'm going to order another one. Like I said, it was that good. It's nice to know where it's actually coming from so I can give the guy props. And I will do that in my other video when this thing actually comes in, right? Because my youngest son wanted this axe so bad that he's like, no, this one's mine. So I'm just like, damn, well, I guess I got to order a different one. I might as well change it a little bit. But uh, I've been watching a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of YouTube videos coming up from some of the metal works over in like Pakistan and stuff like that. It's pretty amazing to watch, right? These guys are dressed in like their, um, I don't know what their garments are called like over there. I don't know what they're called, but to see these people working in like, uh, 
in metallurgy and they're like, they're making giant batches of steel and there's fire and it's like a shop environment and they're wearing, they're wearing this stuff and it's like, yo, it works for them. That's crazy. Over here, like a heat treat operator would want to wear a bunch of protective shit. These guys are wearing like scarves, but hey, they make, they make great quality stuff. Um, especially for blacksmith stuff like this. So I don't know, to me, made in Pakistan is pretty freaking awesome. I've compared it to the other axes and I've cut trees down with it, right? Um, it, it is what it is. Same thing with a silky saw. A silky saw is a saw that is, it, it's from Japan. It is designed in Japan. It's an amazing blade. Uh, and if you buy a silky saw, like, I don't even know if it's going to come from Japan. I, I assume that it would, but what's to stop somebody from taking the silky saw design and making it in Mexico or making it in a different country? You're still getting a silky saw, right? It's just made in a different place. Now, some will say that there's different work, you know, quality and stuff like that coming out of Mexico than there is Japan. I, I don't know if the product works out, it does. I mean, I guess some products have tighter, uh, <laughs> tighter clearances on certain things. And, uh, maybe if you're looking at a product that is really, really difficult to make and the tolerances on it have to be just effing perfect. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for me to think of an example right off the top of my head. Then, then maybe I would uh, be a little bit more worried of, about where my item's coming from. But when we're talking something like an ax, right? Uh, something that's going to get beat up anyway. Um, I have no problem getting it from a place like Pakistan. They do know how to make some good axes. Um, so yeah, that's just what I've seen. Um, so just kind of be careful shopping around on Etsy, I guess. If that really does bother you, that you're ordering from a, a knife shop that says it's in Great Britain or something like that and the stuff shows up from Pakistan and that's an automatic turnoff for you. Yo, I got news. I got axes from Pakistan and they're fucking awesome compared to the axes from good old America that cost way more, at least in the hatchet department. I don't know. Anyone out there looking for a hatchet? Made in Pakistan isn't exactly the end of the world. It's pretty fucking awesome, actually, because you're going to pay $100 for a hatchet that another place is going to want $200 for. And from my personal experience, the quality's there. So, and I actually have this axe. You guys actually see my review here. So, uh, just anybody on Etsy shopping or just looking around at awesome stuff, just kind of be wary of that. Uh, <laughs> it is kind of funny, the other sword that was literally like a katana blade. Uh, and I get it, I get why maybe the guy would be, well, it's not like you were expecting a katana blade from Japan, from like the Shinzu knife house in Japan, you know, and then it shows up from Pakistan and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, I, I don't think uh, London, a place in London would be that much better at making an authentic katana-ish blade as Pakistan, right? Schematics, right? We're talking about a drawing on a napkin here, right? So it's all about just finding a blacksmith that's actually skilled enough to do this stuff. So... Yeah, I'll make another video when my little custom project comes in and we'll have to check it out and we'll have to compare the difference in the sheaths and see if uh, it was worth the extra I don't know, $10 that I paid for this one, all right? Uh, I got some other cool stuff coming in from here. Uh, we did find some really badass blades and I would really like to see what their quality is all about and everything. We got them for a pretty good price. So we got some, uh, some damn near sword stuff coming in. I don't know this, this thing that we have coming out, it's supposed to be like, I don't know, like a 20, 18 inch blade or something like that. And like an eight inch handle. We'll see. It looks pretty killer. They're even engraving it for me. Well, we'll see how, how that turns out and we'll see how much 
how much credit we can give that shop. So anyway, uh, if you enjoy any of this stuff, I don't know, subscribe. Yeah. Later, folks.